So here's what we're going to do today, guys. We're going to install an Archbase distro. Everything from beginning to end will be something that anybody that wants to leave Windows and move to Linux can do and be up and running. And I promise you this. The tests that I'm getting ready to do should be up and running in less than an hour. And not just up and running in less than an hour, but have all of the software that you usually use on your operating system installed. That's what we're going to do today on eBuzz Central. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, the first thing I want to tell you, what I've done is I've went through... Yes, this is a Windows 11 machine. It's a new laptop. Well, it's not a new laptop. It's a new laptop to me that I just purchased and I want to put Linux on it. But what I did is I'm doing an example for those of you out there that are using Windows or as a matter of fact, if you're on a, a Pop! OS or a, a Linux Mint, take all the programs or the software that you use and go ahead and pin it to the panel. There's a reason I do this because right now, before I make this jump, I'm going to look down here at the software that I'm using. I've got a mail program. I've got my file manager down there. I've got Firefox, which is my main browser. I have Microsoft Edge's browser for the simple fact that I have things concerning my work that I have to have it for. I hate that fact, but it is what it is. I've got a snipping tool down here or screenshot. I've got Qubit Torrent, GIMP, Shotcut, VirtualBox. Cody. I've also got OBS. You can see that it's running. And I have a couple games that I still own from back when I had a Wii and a PlayStation 2 that my kids thoroughly love to enjoy. So sometimes I like to take a machine and unhook it, take it to the living room and hook it up to a television and me and the kids can have a little retro gaming night. I'm going to show you how to get those set up. And then I've got clip grab for when I want to grab something like a video that I've uploaded. And I've done this in the past. And for some reason, lost the backup copy that I have to it. I'll go ahead and download it so I can throw it somewhere on storage. But we're going to go through here and put everything that you use down on that panel. Now, before you do anything from this point forward, write every single one of those down. Put it on a list. So that way, when you get over to your Linux install, you know what programs you need to put to make yourself comfortable with this transition. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to go over to your file manager and then go through your downloads, your pictures, uh, your music and your videos, whatever you might have download on there that you can't lose, you, you want to keep, because that's what I've already done. If you look right here, I've already got something called carryover. Carryover is the things that I will be taking to the new install. I've already backed those up. They're on a USB. So without any further to do, let's get going. Now, the distribution that I chose today is one that when I tell you, my comments are going to light up and say, you don't ever recommend this for a new user. Well, yes, I do. So what we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to the browser. And what we're going to look up right off the bat is Garuda Linux. Now, here's what we're going to do. Zip on up here, click on Garuda, and then we're going to go to download. Zip on here to download. And I'm going to go with download Dragonized KDE Edition. Now, some of you are going to blow up my comments and go, that's ugly. This and that. I don't care what it looks like at this moment in time. I'm actually going to keep Garuda on this system because I've grown kind of accustomed to the way it looks. And there's a few little tweaks that make it look really good. And I'll show you those once we get it installed. So go ahead and just click download. You can do it from SourceForge, Torrent. I recommend using a torrent. Zip on over, get Qubit Torrent, download it. It takes no time at all. So, once you get that downloaded, what you're going to want to do is zip on over and get Bellina Etcher. So, let's go Bellina Etcher. Let's go ahead and click on that. And then what you'll want to do right here is just go down here and download it for Windows. Once that's downloaded, you can close this out. And if you come down here to your file folder... Open up Belina Etcher. I already have it installed. So let's go ahead and open that up. And right here, it'll say flash from a file. Let's get you a 16 gigabyte USB stick. Drop it into the USB port. We're going to flash from file. So let's go pick the file. There's Garuda. You open it. 
Then you select your target, click Lexar, click select. Once you have that done, all you got to do is click flash and it'll flash you a USB. It'll take approximately two to five minutes. Once that's done, you'll want to go over, eject it. And once you've made sure you made a list of your primary software and you backed up your items, you can shut your PC down. Now, what you'll want to do is go over and look on the internet. Find out what your boot menu key is for your system. It's either Escape, F2, F12, F10. Just look it up so that way when you reboot, you can hit that key, boot into the USB, and it'll bring you to the screen. Now, I'm going to show you that screen because I don't have screen capture. I'm going to go ahead and show you what you're going to be looking at in VirtualBox so that way you can kind of get a tone of where we're going, okay? So give me just one second, and I'll get this up so I can show you what you're going to see. Okay, once you boot into Garuda from your USB, this is the screen you will see. You will have an option to boot, allowing proprietary drivers, which basically says NVIDIA. If you're using an NVIDIA card on your desktop or on your laptop, I say suggest that or you can boot with open source drivers. Now let's go ahead. I don't have an NVIDIA. What I'm using is an i5 with the Intel integrated graphics. So I'm just gonna go with open source drivers and hit enter. And I'm not gonna cut this video. I'm gonna show you everything that you're gonna see as it boots up. Now you will see the virtual box stuff drop down because I am doing it in virtual, but you'll see a lot of text come on your screen and it's just running in the background to get you started. <clears throat> Sorry about the cough. But when you're not cutting things like this, it makes it, you got to be a little bit more precise. A start job is running for automatic HWD, so be patient. And it tells you how many seconds are left and there's no limit. This is normal. Don't worry about it. A lot of times when you use a Pop! OS or an Ubuntu. Well, Pop! OS shows this sometimes now, but sometimes you won't see this running. And it's quite normal to see a splash screen or something like that. I actually kind of like to see the text because I like to know what's going on. And if something should cause a problem, I can find out real quick. There's the beautiful Garuda spinner waiting to get you to your desktop. And it may be a little laggy for you. It may look like it's a little laggy. That's for the simple fact that I'm running it in a virtual box on a machine that doesn't have the greatest specs. Like I said, it's got an i5 four core eight thread. I believe I got eight gigabytes of RAM and I'm running a virtual machine on top of Windows. And Windows is using like 3.8 gigs just to be on the desktop. So that's pretty depressing. And when you boot this from a USB, it's going to be a lot snappier for you because you're not in a virtual desktop. And right here, don't worry about this message. This message is for me because I'm in a virtual box and it says VBox client failed. I'm not worrying about that. I'm just going to close that. Show up here that we're connected to internet. Let's go ahead and close those. It's a virtual box. And your internet's right here. Now, I do want to tell you, sometimes, I'm going to go ahead and give you a heads up. Sometimes, if you boot from a USB, the first time you boot in, for some reason, it'll pop up and say, can't find your wireless connection. I have found 99.9% .9 of the times with Garuda, if you just reboot, the wireless connection pops right up. Now, I don't know what causes that. I really don't. But I do know the fact that if I run Garuda in a, uh, off a USB on a Windows machine, if I boot into it, use it a little bit, and then boot out of it, and then boot back into Windows. Windows clock's messed up. I don't know if it has to do with the UEFI, the BIOS, or whatever that might be. But this is what you'll see once you boot into your USB. What you'll want to do right now, we won't pay any attention to this until we actually have it installed. We'll go ahead and close and install Garuda. And once the installer comes up, it will say welcome. So we will go ahead and click next. Pick your location wherever you are in the world or a place that's close to your location in the same time zone. Click next. Go ahead and verify your keyboard, what kind of keyboard it is. Next. Now right here, it's gonna ask you what you wanna do. Erase the disk, manual partitioning, 
Now you will have an option, I do believe, of an automatic partition with swap. If you're on a laptop or you've got low RAM, I would suggest you choose that one. What it is, you'll see down here, click, and then you'll have hibernation without swap, hibernation with swap. Right now, I'm just gonna click erase disk, click, and see how it popped up? No swap or swap with hibernate. Go ahead and pick swap with hibernate. If you have low RAM, and especially if you're on a laptop, let's go ahead and click next. Right here, you put in your name. We're gonna put in eBuzz Central. You put in whatever name you want and then come down here and pick your super secret password. We'll do that twice and we're good to go. Then click next and then it gives you a summary. Gives you your location, keyboard, partitions and all that good stuff. Then you can go to install and right here it says the Garuda installer is about to make changes to your disk in order to install Garuda Soaring. You will not be able to undo these changes. That's fine. If you've made it to this point and you're saying, yes, I'm finally going to take the jump and I'm going to do this, just click install now. If not, you can shut the video off and I appreciate you watching the first 10 minutes. But go ahead and click install. Once you do that, it'll ask you to reboot. Once you reboot, you'll be brought back to the Garuda desktop. I'm going to do that real quickly and the only thing I'm going to install off camera is OBS. So I will install OBS and then we will continue once I do that. See you in a second. Okay, so you've booted into your Garuda install. Now, the only thing I've done is I've installed OBS. You can see it down here, it is running. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and right click it and I'm gonna pin it to my launcher so it'll stay there after I close it out. Now, if you notice up to the left, it says a partial upgrades detected. When I updated, no, check that. When I installed OBS, it automatically updated a few packages that went along with it. So what I'm going to do at this point, and what you're going to be notified of when you first boot into yours, is that you need to update your system. So we're going to go ahead and go through that process right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and click on Update System. And it'll ask for my password. So go ahead and put in your super secret password. And it's going to go ahead and synchronize the package databases. Now, at this point in time, I would usually cut and go away, but right now it's refreshing the mirror list using rate mirrors. Please be patient. This may take a little bit. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to stay right on this screen until it's done, and I will be right back with you. Okay, the mirrors have refreshed, and it's asking me if I want to proceed with the install. Total download size is 815 megabytes. Total installed size is going to be right at 2,191 megabytes. So, yes, I want to continue because I do want to be completely up to date. And right here, you see I've got zero of 195 packages. I'm just going to go forward a little bit. I'll make sure that I come back before this is done because I don't want to be accused of cutting my videos in a certain way to make it look easier. But we're just installing packages. So we're one of 195. I will see you all very shortly. Okay, as you can see, it's speeding right along and it's almost done. Now it's checking keys in the key ring and checking the package integrity. So I should be fully up to date here very shortly. Now it's checking available disk space. It's performing a snapper for you automatically. That's what I do love about Garuda is it will take a snapshot of your machine prior to an upgrade. So that way, should it mess up, you can always go back and deal with that. You can fix it and go back to an operating system that was running just fine before the update. And maybe that way you can point out or find out what's causing the issue. Now, I will say this. Like I said, I was tired of people choosing Ubuntu or Pop! OS. I chose Garuda because it's one of the easier Arch distributions to use. It's not Arch, but it is based on Arch, which is pretty nice. So we're gonna go right here and it says it's reloading system manager and it's doing some updating and upgrading. It doesn't really take that long, especially if you're used to something like a Windows machine. If you're used to updating on Windows, that is an utter nightmare. I think the last time I did a Windows 11 install for a client and upgrade, it took close to two and a half hours. And that was with a, a person that had business internet. So it wasn't like he was using cheap internet and it was taking me forever. It was just a ridiculous nightmare. 
Now it's syncing all files. It's checking for plugin updates. System updated. So what time is it? 7.58. All right, guys, I do want to point something out right here. I do believe we started this update at 7.54. So that update took a total of four minutes. And when I installed Garuda, when I booted into it, I wrote the time down. And when I was finished and it said time to reboot was six minutes. As of this point right now, actually sitting in front of a computer waiting for it to install an update, I have spent 10 minutes. Now, let me ask you, what can you do in 10 minutes on a window machine? Absolutely nothing. So let's go ahead and close out of this. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And right here, you've got a couple things I want to point out. So we're going to go over here to the Garuda Assistant. Now, the Garuda Assistant, if you come to this before it notifies you, you can do a system update right here. Refresh your mirror list. Remove orphan files. You can take snapshots of your system. You've got system components, settings, system specs, and other diagnostics. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then you've got Garuda Gamer. Hey, I may need to stop here because if you do remember earlier in this video... I said I needed to get a couple emulators. Now you can get Steam and Heroic and Lutris, anything that you want right here. Proton, I hear Proton's doing really well with AAA games uh, on Steam, so that may be something you want to look at. Actual games you can download or emulators. What I'm looking for is Dolphin because I had that prior and I want to find the PlayStation. I know I'm taking too much time, guys. You're ready to get on. Oh, there it is right there. I'm going to go ahead and apply. And we're going to go ahead and let those download. And it shouldn't take too long. 3 out of 10, 4 out of 10. Total download size, 23 megabytes. Total installed size, just under 100 megabytes. And it's performing a snapper post snapshot for the following configurations. And it's syncing all file systems. Press enter to exit. So if I'm correct, I should be able to go up here and click on Dolphin. And there's my Dolphin emulator. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Yes. And as you can see, it's open right here. I'm going to go ahead and pin that to my launcher because that's an application I had a while ago at the beginning of the video. And then I also want to look for PC. I'm trying to remember, is it? PCS, yeah, there it is right there. Let's go ahead and open that up as well. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and pin that to launcher and close. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys with setting it up, but what I am going to do here shortly is transfer some files over and show you that it does open the games that I own up in the system. Now, that gets rid of Dolphin and PCSX2. I've got a few more to go, but we're, we're not done here yet. You've got Garuda Settings Manager right here. And it's got your hardware configuration, your kernel, your language packages, user accounts, and things like that. We can go ahead and close out of that. As you can see, this welcome screen is quite handy and quite helpful for you, especially if you are new to the Linux community or new to Garuda. Now, what I do want to do real quick, let's go over here and go to Settings. And I want to change something. Because right now, if you open the file manager, I am not a big fan of the icons. I like these. They don't bother me. But when I get in here, I want something that looks a little different. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and go to Appearance. And I'm going to go to Icons. And I'm going to switch those over to the Candy icons and Apply. And that has been applied. So let's close out of that. Then we can come down here. And there you go. I like that folder view a little better. And then when you go into stuff like pictures or videos and things like that, it looks a little different. And then what I really like is you get a little snapshot over here. See my videos popping up? It shows that I got a couple videos in there, two items 10 minutes ago. So I know it's just personal preference. And then you've got quick access system cleaner. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and click on add and remove software. So we'll go ahead and open this up over here. And as you can see, it's populated. Now, what we need to do is I need to go down here. I want to keep the Garuda welcome here. I do want to keep console. If 
Fire Dragon is their version of a web browser. It's based on Firefox, but it's got a lot of privacy and ad blockers and stuff like that pre-built into the web browser so you don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and maximize that. See, it comes with Dark Reader, so you've got a dark mode. What I do wanna check out real quick is I'm gonna go Mandalorian Wallpaper. Because I do believe I had one on that Windows machine I showed you all earlier. We'll go ahead and let that open up. And as you can see right here, I need to update because we're having some issues with the Google. Because it pulls all of its... This is Seer X. This is Garuda's own little search engine. And it pulls results from DuckDuckGo, from Yahoo, from Google. But you don't get tracked. That's what I really like about it. So let's go ahead and go over to Images. And see if those will open up because I do want my picture of the Mandalorian and I do believe that is it right there so let's click on it right click let's go ahead and open that image in a new tab and it opened it up so let's right click and save we'll just go over to pictures and we will save it there and now we can close out of here I know this is boring to y'all but this is stuff that you all are going to be doing so now that we got the picture downloaded let's go ahead and right click and configure desktop and scroll up oh I got to add the picture so let's go to add image there's the image right there. Let's go ahead and open that up. Scroll up to the top. Let's pick that Mandalorian and click apply. Let's close out of that. And there we go. We got a brand new background. It's the Mandalorian. It's the same background we had a while ago when we started. So let's look up Spectacle. Spectacle is the screenshot tool that comes with Garuda. And I'm not a big fan of it, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I know a lot of people say, why would you remove it when it's a totally good tool that works? Because there's another tool I like better and I want to utilize it. Got to put in my super secret password and get it correct. And let's go ahead and uninstall that. And it's in the process as we speak. Command is finished. So now we're going to look for Flameshot. And Flameshot is an awesome tool. If you haven't used it, I suggest you definitely give it a try. It is a very powerful screenshot tool, and it gives you a lot of options that you can use after you've taken the screenshots. Whether you want to put notes on it, whether you want to point things out with arrows, circles, it just gives you so many tools and so many different ways you can use it. I don't need GNOME Shell, but I do want to add Grim because it is a screenshot utility for Wayland, and it helps Flameshot out quite a bit. So we've got all of that selected. All we have to do now is go ahead and zip on up to the check mark and click install. Click yes, put in your super secret password, and it will start installing it. If I'm off just a little bit with my audio, there's a reason. My microphone died. I'm using a backup microphone and I'm having to do a voiceover. So if I'm messing things up, I'm sorry. And as you can tell right there, I've lost my icon for Garuda App Manager. We'll have to figure that out here in a second. But we looked up Flameshot. We go ahead and start it. And as you can see, it pins it to the panel up top. So anytime you need to take a screenshot, you just click on it, select your area, and there you go. Your screenshot's taken, and you've got a lot of different tools down here you can use to make adjustments to your screenshot, whatever you might want to do. But we're just going to save it at this point. Go ahead and save it in pictures and click save and then you should get a notification in the upper right letting you know that the screenshot has been successfully saved so we'll close out of that now like i said if you get a chance definitely take a look at flameshot it is a great tool and it makes your job extremely easy if you're needing to take a lot of screenshots and put annotations on them and things like that so now we're going to look for qubit torrent if i can spell it right and let's click on that and let's go ahead and click on install and click your check mark let you know what dependencies it'll be included put in your super secret password and let's move forward and it is installing rather smoothly it's performing a snapper snapshot and it is finished so qubit torrent is installed now if you Go up here. I want to go ahead and see if I can fix this icon right now. So let's go over here. Let's uh, choose icon. Well, wait. Let's see if we can clear the icon and the Garuda logo come back. 
it doesn't so let's go ahead and choose an icon let's just put in Garuda and see if they give us something there it is right there let's go ahead and click on that click OK and apply and there it is we have our Garuda logo back now let's go up here and let's open up Qubit Torrent there it is right there let's go ahead and open it up yes we agree and there is Qubit Torrent open it up and ready to go let's right click on the icon let's pin it to the launcher and let's go ahead and close out of that and as you can see it pinned it to the tray up top and I bet what you're thinking right now is with everything getting pinned up top I bet we're using an enormous amount of resources with everything that's supposedly running in the background right now and it's not really that bad to be quite honest if you look at Windows let's just do a comparison let's open up a terminal let's go ahead and maximize and it gives you a nice information up here Garuda Linux 5.18.8 Zen 1 kernel KDE Plasma 5.25.2 but just to be on a desktop in something like Windows you're using anywhere from 3.5 gigabytes let's go ahead and open up an HTOP right here and at present with console open or your terminal open and Qubit Torrent and Flameshot open in the background you're at about 1.89 gigabytes so you're still using two less gigabytes than Windows and what's bugging me right now is I'm gonna have to check the CPU in this laptop because it shows right now that one of the threads is running at 86 percent I've seen this on a couple other distributions let's open system monitor and see if it reflects the same thing let's go to history and it does show that this core 2 is running at about 87 to 88 percent that's something I'll have to investigate because I believe it was doing it on Windows as well so I may be looking at a processor change in the near future but these are just some of the tools that you have that you can look at in your Garuda install. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and close out of Terminal. Let's close that window. Now we're going to look for another application, which is GIMP. And there it is right there. And that's the GNU Image Manipulation Program. We're going to go ahead and install it on this system because we had it on the other one. So let's click Install. And what you want to do right here is just go ahead and click everything. Ain't nothing worse than getting into some image manipulation and finding out you don't have all the tools that you need. So click all those. Let's go ahead and install that. Click yes. Go ahead and put in your super secret password. And it will start the install. And it'll show you down. We're at 10 of 25. So it's installing 25 packages, checking the integrity and it's making a snapshot of the system prior to install so that way should something go wrong you can go back refresh from your snapshot and start from where you were prior to the issue happening and GIMP takes a little longer to install it's not too bad because it is a rather large program about 200 megabytes it ain't too bad though and it looks as though it has finished so let's go up here let's go ahead and do a search for GIMP there it is right there let's go ahead and open that up and it'll take a little bit on the first start because it loads everything into it and there it is right there and the icon pops up let's right click on it let's go ahead and pin that to launcher let's go ahead and maximize and you can see right here let's look at what version of GIMP we are presently running and that would be 2.10.32 so the newest version that's pretty awesome let's go ahead and close out of that and let's zip on up here and close out of that now the next application we're going to take a look at is Caden Live. I'm not going to go with Shotcut on this install. So let's go ahead and install. And I'm going to include everything here except for record my desktop because I do use OBS Studio. So let's click OK. And then we can go ahead and install that. It says the following 20 packages need to be retrieved. 53 megabytes. Let's go ahead and put in our super secret password and let's install that. One of the reasons I'm not using Shotcut is because it's had issues here for a little while of using way too much RAM on a Linux machine. I don't know what the issue is, but every time it seems that I use Shotcut on Linux, when I'm rendering something, it goes, you're out of RAM, you're out of RAM, you're out of RAM. And I just don't want to deal with that. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and just use Caden Live okay it looks as though the command finishes okay it is installed on our system the backup snapshot has been taken 
let's go up here and look for Caden Live. And there it is right there. Let's go ahead and open that up. The icon should pop up down on our launcher down there. Once it does, we will go ahead and pin it. There it is right there. Let's go ahead and right click it. Pin to launcher. And let's go ahead and maximize. And there is Caden Live. I like that it's using the Garuda theme inside of it. That's pretty awesome. I can adjust everything here. But what I want to do real quick is I want to go ahead and zip on over. Let's open up a file. And I'm going to drag a short little video in here. And make sure that I can do the things that I need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one right here. Drag it over into the project bin. Let's close that out. Go ahead and switch the frame rate. And it's done. So let's go ahead and drag it. And we can drag it, drag it on the timeline. And let's see if it will play. Okay, we're just going to do a real quick test right here. And it plays just fine. Now can I extend the timeline and make the clip longer so I can do finer adjustments? Yes, I can. We can scroll back over. We can make it a little bigger there. Yes, so it's okay. We're, okay, we're just yep. gonna do it. pretty easy. Okay, so I can come in here and do all the adjustments I need to do. So let's close out of that. No, I don't want to save the changes. Cancel. I made a mistake, guys. Sorry about that. Let's close. Save changes. No, I do not want to save changes. So that is done. Okay, so let's come back up top. Now we're gonna look at clip grab. Let's go ahead and click on install. And right here, we're going to go ahead and check yes. Let's go ahead and put in our super secret password. And it's installing. Command line is finished, so it's done. And you know what? Something's bothering me down here. This, These icons aren't really blending well with this background. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and change it to a darker background and see if that helps out a little bit. Yes, it does. I like that. That looks much better much better so let's go over here and let's take and do a search for clip grab there's clip grab right there let's go ahead and open it up and it is open so let's go ahead and zip down to the icon right click pin it to the launcher and we now have clip grab installed now the next application we're going to look for is cody i love using cody i have a big movie and television series collection and it's just easier for me to play on Cody, so let's go ahead and add all of those. I probably shouldn't have added Pulse Audio because I'm running Pipewire. But it should red flag me at the end. That's why I selected it. Because I want to show you, even though you're running Pipewire, this system will not let you break it. So it's installing 14 of 14 packages. And when you get to the bottom here, it should let you know that Pulse Audio will... Pro do you want it? See, there you go. Pulse Audio and Pipewire are in conflict. I'm not going to complete that transaction. Go ahead and put in my super secret password. Proceed with installation. Yes. So I will go ahead and install. But I skip the Pulse Audio right here or in conflict. Remove Pipewire. No, I'm not going to remove it. It will not mess up Pulse Audio. So let's press any key to continue. And we should be able to enter here a couple times and it just give us, yep. So let's go ahead and close out of that. So we're still running Pipewire and Pulse Audio won't screw us up. Now let's go ahead and do a search for Cody and let's go ahead and open it up and it seems to be opening just fine. There it is right there. You can scroll down, scroll up. Everything seems to be pretty smooth. Let's go ahead and minimize it. Let's go ahead and make it full screen again and everything scrolls just fine. And it doesn't seem to be having any issues, so we'll go ahead and close out of that. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and zip back over to Add and Remove Software. So we have Octopies back open. Next thing we're going to do a search for is GNOME Boxes. Now, I could use Virtual Box, but I truly love using GNOME Boxes. And there it is right there. So let's go ahead and click on that, and let's install. And it'll show you all the dependencies. Put in your super secret password. And it is installing GNOME Boxes. Now GNOME Boxes is a great emulation program. A lot of people I know love using Teemu. I love it too. It's just easier for me to use GNOME Boxes with my workflow and what I do. It's doing the 
snapper post snapshot for the following configuration so it's saving us there and let's zip on up here and let's go ahead and open gnome boxes so we can pin it to the launcher so let's do the search real quick boxes there it is right there let's go ahead and open it up and there is gnome boxes ready to go so let's go down here right click pin it to the launcher and close it and we will go ahead and close out of the program now the next thing we're going to do a search for is edge microsoft edge actually and i know why are you putting edge on a linux machine like i said in the beginning of the video i have microsoft edge for work purposes i have to be have the ability to get there so i'm going to go ahead and install this let's go ahead and do all of these no we don't need gnome keyring and we will go ahead and install it and this does take a little longer to install not a long time but it takes a little longer let's go ahead and put in our password and it's going to start building it from the bin now i know everybody out there watching this is like this is blasphemy microsoft edge on linux you're defeating the whole purpose trust me i have every all the most of the tracking in microsoft edge shut off but when you're using your computers and you have a business aspect to it and you need to have the ability to do certain things you have to have it on there and it has to be on your machine because that's what puts food on the table for my kids I always tell everybody use the tools that's right for you if you love Windows use that tool if you love Mac use that tool okay edge is done so let's go up here and do a search Microsoft Edge it's right there let's go ahead and open it up and once it opens it up definitely want to go down and pin it to our launcher let's go ahead and minimize it right click pin to launcher and it is there and then I'm gonna move it over here behind fire dragon and I will probably install Firefox at a later time as well. So, But there is Microsoft Edge. It's installed. It's real easy to install applications on a Linux machine. Now, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and... Where's Dolphin? I'm going to go ahead and open up Dolphin. And I'm going to show you that it works out of the box. It's easy. So all we got to do is go over here and we need to open up a game file which Dolphin can recognize and actually use. There's the Wii game. I maximized it so it's easier to see. There it is right there. So let's go ahead and open that up and we'll see if it plays. And there you go. It's starting up. There's a version of Mario Kart Wii that I have the disc to. I've just ripped it and made a copy of it to put on my PC because I don't have a Wii anymore. And it's starting up inside the emulator here doesn't seem to be having any problems let's go big screen and i do have it muted so you can't hear the audio because i do not want to get hit with a copyright strike and it's not muted so i will definitely have to make some changes here okay i will have to mute that out so it doesn't show up so i'll have to do some editing after the video but that shows you right there that dolphin does work i'm going to go ahead and close out of that and that, guys, was a real quick look at Garuda, getting it installed, leaving Windows, installing applications, making it easy to install applications. I don't know what else you can ask for. Stop recommending just Linux Mint. Stop recommending just Pop! OS. If you're somebody that wants to try Linux and wants to give Linux a shot, definitely zip on over, download Garuda, and take it for a test drive. I'm crazy. Everybody will tell me I'm crazy. You do not point new people at Arch or Arch-based distros. I'm sorry. This is Garuda. This isn't Arch. But you've got to take a leap of faith sometimes. And I think that's definitely the time to do it. Is when you're ready, jump on Garuda and give it a shot. What do you all think? Do you guys think I'm completely out of my mind? Or do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we're producing, you can support us by becoming a member right here on YouTube, going over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel, buying us a coffee, or zipping on over to PayPal and throwing us a donation. 
And I want to take a little time right now to thank the people that make this channel possible. And that's all of my supporters, my YouTube members, and my patrons. Executive producer, Misla Krileja. Producer, Mitchell Valentino. VIP sponsors are Eugene Lee, Brian Mitchell, Antoine Wilk. All access sponsors, Mike DePolis and PJ. Sponsors, Cato Gosted, Nitrix Development Team, Chad Jones, David Collins, Marco Lopez, Steve Willard, Eric Crowell, Joel Celerzano, Warlock, Sibius, Art Edwards, Marmaduke, Keith Hefner, and Stein Sailor Odland. Thank you guys. You're the reason this channel exists. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, here are a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source, but sometimes I do do a little Windows bashing and maybe a little Google bashing as well. As always, thank you for watching my video and I will see you in the next video.